Am I on? <laughs> Sorry, different people, different time. Emily normally control me from there. <laughs> anyway, so I was just saying we're gonna look at this story. You know, sometimes we listen to stories and we kind of become over familiarized with them and we don't pick the the meat of the word that God is trying to speak to us about in those stories. So Samuel, how did this boy come about and where was he living? Samuel was a child of promise. This boy came as a result of his mother's cries unto God. So, it was a gift. A gift from God. And the mother, during the time she was crying, just like some of us, we, when we pray to God for something, we say, Lord, if you do it for me, I will do this. And when we get our answers, we forget. She did not forget. Because he, she promised God that if you give me this child, I will dedicate the child to you. So the boy was dedicated to God. He grew up in the house of God. And this reading we are reading about today is what happened as Samuel was sleeping in the house of God. Now, when I read that, some things actually popped in my head. Number one, the child grew up in the house of God. And the reading was saying that at this time, you know, he'd not known God. How about that? She, he's growing up in the house of God. He's working with the pastor or the vicar at the time. Okay? But he did not know God or understand the things of God. We are going to just pick up two things really well here. Like I said, Samuel is an answer to prayer. Now my question to you is, have you ever prayed for something and God answered you? Hold on to that. Number two, dream. Young man had a dream. Have you ever, ever had a dream? And when you wake up, you remember that dream. Have you? That's good. Who among you have a prayer journal? Anybody? Wonderful. Those are very good for you because when you when you when you pray or when you dream as actually you wake up from your sleep the dream journal and the prayer journal are there for you to capture what the Lord is speaking to you about so you have a dream journal you have a prayer journal do you have a dream journal It works. As long as you clip them together, you don't throw them away. Dream journals are also very important. So, Samuel had a dream. Because he did not understand. He did not understand who was calling. Just like we. I remember there was an old guy in this church when I just came. We were doing prayers one day here. 
and they taught us about the voice of God and listening to the Holy Spirit. And I was speaking to him later and he said to me, but God has never spoken to me. And I'm thinking, mm, no, he has. You just did not understand it. Do you know, this guy was so good in this church that even now when I think back, what I remember is that every morning you come to church, the Bibles are in the pew. When you go home, he is packing. And he was old. Okay? So he was serving even until that time. The other thing I want us to hold on to is mentorship. How important is that? Someone could have had this dream and like us would have said, oh, it's one of those things. Or maybe I was just hearing things. Somebody else, you know, was talking in the house and that's what I was hearing and push it aside. That's what we do, don't we? When we have a dream, we say, oh, maybe I ate too much beans or I ate too much you know, rice, so I drank too much last night. That's why I'm dreaming. You will never say, oh, maybe God is saying something to me in that dream. Because we don't understand. So what do you understand about the dreams that God has given to you? Have you ever said, speak, Lord, for your servant? listening? Have you ever, you know, just listen and run with what God has given to you? I was speaking to Tim the other day and I talked about some dreams that I have had in my life. Some of them, if somebody had come to me, I said, Betty, God said, I would have told that person, in your dreams, just go. But when you hear some things for yourself and you understand that that's a word from God and you do it, miracles happen. Things happen that you look back. Today I look back on that. Some of the dreams I've heard, and for me, they are unbelievable. I am going to tell you my dream and answers to prayer, but something else that struck me today when I was looking at the, you know, the, um, the yearly devotionals that we're going through, and there's a story there about a lady called Vivian. So Vivian, they say, had three children, and she was pregnant with the fourth child. And the third child had an issue. He was about eight months old, had a hole in the heart. They operated on the child. Things did not go right. And they told Vivian they're going to switch off the life support machine for the child to just die. Now, this woman was not a believer. And he asked, she asked for something. She told the medical staff, that she wants to try one last thing. She told them to get her a vicar, a pastor, to come and pray for the child. And they called, um, what's his name? Uh, hey, Nicky Gumbo. And they called him, he's the local vicar there at the time. He was in charge of the place. So they called him, he came. Um, prayed with the child, and miracles happened. He prayed and went away. He said there were those fancy words that he just prayed over the child. He went away. And a few days later, he came back to visit. She comes running to him, and she says, Oh, after you prayed, overnight this happened. Change came. Change came. And he 
he said, I prayed in the name of Jesus for God to heal him. And he also said, he says, all he prayed was that we should pray God-sized prayer. Not your size of prayer. When Anna was praying for Samuel, he prayed with, she prayed with faith that God would bless her. So, what is it that you're praying for and you are afraid of asking? And you think that's too big for me to ask. God will not answer that prayer. What is it? Because it's God that answers prayers. In the 80s, we had bands that we used to wear, 80s, 90s, that, you know, push. Push simply means pray until something happens. Push. So whatever you are struggling with, whatever you have prayed about, see, like Hannah, she went to the altar. She knelt there. She was crying and mourning in her spirit. She was not shouting. We shout a lot where I come from, where we pray. Okay? Is the African way. But my dad used to say, God is not deaf. <laughs> he can hear you. He can even hear when you don't speak. So Hannah was there crying to God. It was a personal relationship. See, when Samuel was told to say, speak, Lord, for your servants is listening. He did not say, um, Eli is going to hear the word and interpret it to Samuel. So when you pray and you say, oh, Tim, can you pray with me because I have this issue? He can pray with you, but God wants to speak to you. Are you ready to listen to him? Are you ready to get your answers from him? Or are you waiting for the man of God in charge of the house to answer that prayer and, you know, listen to the prayer and come back to tell you this is what God is saying? Are we waiting on God and really listening to him? The boy Samuel did. He really did. There are so many different ways or different, uh, you know, places that we have um, examples of answered prayers. Genesis 15:1. It says, "After these things, the Lord of the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, "Do not fear, Abraham. I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very." great. That's a dream. And you know how Abraham became great. And today we still pray for Abraham blessings are mine. Because he was blessed to be a blessing to the nations of the world. He came from a dream. And, you know, uh, so Genesis 46, verse 2 says, God speaks to Israel in visions of the night. Visions of the night. So that dream you are throwing away is a vision. You don't wait for somebody else to see the vision for you because God has given it to you. What are you doing with your vision? What are you doing with that dream God has placed in your heart? Did you write it down? The Bible says we should write down the vision and make it plain. What's the importance of putting it down? If I am 
you, okay, I know who I am. Sometimes you see me when I pick papers or I pick my phone and start putting things in. It's because whatever God has placed in my heart at that moment, Betty have a thousand and one things in her brain. And I will forget later. And I will start, Father, what did you say? <laughs> but he gave it. The importance of mentorship is the other one I want to touch on. See, Samuel on his own needed to grow. Samuel needed somebody to teach him the sound of that voice. Today we know that there is the still small voice. The voice that is speaking to you slowly to say, that's not the way to go. Or, don't take that thing, it's not yours. Or, give to that person, this is how I want you to go. That's that still small voice. Do we listen to it? Or somebody need to teach us. Some of us, we have the desire to pray like Hannah or to actually respond to God, you know, speak, Lord, for your servants is listening. But we don't know how to go about it. That's where mentorship is important. Look around the church. Maybe you see somebody you think you can, you know, sit in the corner with and pray with. Or that you can actually phone up to say, um, I am looking at this. What do you think? Then two of you can pray about it. And you go your way and let God work in you. So, question is today, can you actually take the time to ask God, who should I link up with? To help me in my prayer life. Who can I link up with? Who can help me cross the river Jordan? Guys, today... Like I said, I, I said I'm going to talk to you about my dreams. And some of them that God has answered have used in my life. And for me, at the time they happened, I actually did not see anything great about them. I think I mentioned once about a dream uh, I had when the Lord said to go on a 21-day fast. And at that time, I've never done a 21-day fast. And I said to, I was saying to Tim, when I saw him the other day, I said, look, if somebody had come to tell me, Betty, God said to go on 21-day fast, I would have said, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I would have walked away and never thought, you know, gone back to it. But because the word was given to me in the dream, I listened and I can testify that if not for that act, not just me, my whole family would have been wiped out. So the gift that God gives you, that vision that he has placed in you, is not just for you. It's for more than you. It could be to actually bless me tomorrow. I'm selfish like that. <laughs> it could be that God place you or place that dream in your mind to change the life of the children in this church. So what are you doing with that dream? You wonder, some of you are wondering what was the dream. The dream was to do the prayer, so I did. We were traveling to Nigeria. Um, in 2004, I just moved to Luton and I thought, oh, let me take the children. Everybody will go back home and enjoy the sunshine. And we did go home. But as we got there, we had to travel from Lagos to 
Delta, where I come from. I'm traveling along the road. I don't know that day as the journey began, I did not have peace. And I was saying, Father, I don't understand. Why am I feeling like this? And then as we're driving along, a thought came to my head. I, I thought at the time, you know, I was thinking stupid things. Why am I thinking of that? And the question came, if you have an accident, who will you call? And I'm thinking, the roads is really bad. Why am I thinking about if I have an accident? It's like I'm calling for something bad to happen, isn't it? And I was shaking my head physically, like, stop thinking this thing. And the word come again, who will you call? The third time when the word come, just like Samuel, <laughs> I said, okay, I'll call on Jesus. And the voice said, don't just call the name, spill the blood. And I'll say, okay, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I started singing and the children sang with me and we prayed. And as soon as we finish, an accident happened. The accident that happened, I can tell you, it's not a small accident. We would have all been killed. There was a six-foot trailer in front, six-foot trailer behind us. The six-foot trailer behind picked us up on a collision with the one in front. Just before I hit the one in front, the driver of the trailer behind turned, hit a tipper, and the tipper flipped. The guy was still driving. When they met him later, do you know what he said? You guys should be praising God. How many, he first asked how many people died, and they said nobody. And they said, well, you guys should be praising God because, number one, I don't know what happened that I lost control. And secondly, I don't know who turned the vehicle because I could not have done that. You guys are alive, so be happy. And yes, we were happy, but the car was totally written off. And as I said, it was my whole family. My husband was there. All my children were in the car, and it's a van we took, and a niece and a nephew that was traveling with us. So all of us would have been wiped out. It goes back to one dream. One dream. And the question that was being asked, who will you call, will not make sense to anybody except I know what that quest why the question came. Because growing up, I had a cousin that was so close to me. And if anything happened to me, if I banged my leg, instead of calling Christ or God or anybody, I call his name. So if I had called his name, when the accident happened, what would have happened? No answer. I would have been gone. We all have dreams. Write them down. They might not make sense to you today. Might make sense tomorrow. Write down the dream. Don't let it waste. And if you get a mentor, there are things that the mentor will help you do. They can help you grow in Christ. They can help you grow in reading your Bible, in getting an understanding. Because whatever you don't understand, that mentor might have a better understanding. Even if he, does, she, he or she doesn't, they will go back to somebody else that will tell them. Or they will go and study more on that. Then come back to you and say, Betty, I think this is what you were trying to look at. Let's look at it a bit more. Oh, if really prayer is what God is calling you to, you'll be able to sit down and pray with that person. 
Guess what? God answers prayers. He does. Samuel is an example. You see, that answer to that prayer was such a great man. So when you read the story of David, he is there. When you read the story of the first king, which was Saul, he was there. He lived in God's house all his life. How about that? Isn't that great? It's a wonderful thing. You know, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He lived that life. It says, at the time all this was happening, visions were few. So they were very rare. In those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. And visions were quite uncommon. For he had it. He got both. He got the vision, he got the message, and he ran with it as the Lord gave him the message. He did pass on that message. That's a message for another day, though. But he did what he was called to do. All this came together through listening, through doing God's will, and listening to his mentor. I want to say, in conclusion, that in Joel 2.28, he says, It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision. So as I asked earlier, have you ever had a dream? What was the outcome of that dream? We're going to say a prayer right now. And I want to encourage you to do something today. I don't know what you came with this morning. I don't know the dream that God has given to you and you are struggling with. I don't know the pain that you're going through and you're saying, God, why me? When we had that accident, we came out of the, stepped out of the vehicle. The first thing my husband said, he said, why us? For some reason, I turned around and I said, why not you? Who are you? <laughs> because at the time, he wasn't actually a practicing Christian. And he's asking why me? Like, who are you to ask why me? <laughs> you need to have a relationship with him. Why me? That's the question some of us ask. But today I want you to do something. Behind there, near the crosses, there are some papers there. I don't know what you have in your mind that is troubling you. I don't know the pain you are carrying. I don't know the fear and the shame you live with. But the Lord knows it all. But I want you to do something today. Hannah cried to God and miracles happened. And I want to encourage you today. Go back there if you have anything in your mind. Anything you are struggling with. The God we serve is a big God. I want you to pray a, a big prayer, a God-sized prayer, not your prayer today. Go back there, pray it, stick it. There are papers and pen there and some paint for you to stick it. Stick it to the cross. Stick it to the cross symbolically and leave it there. It's 
not for you. You can turn it upside down, okay? So people don't read it. And it's later to be prayed upon and it will be taken down and it will be destroyed. Don't worry about that. We won't pray over there. So, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, that we see the evidence of Hannah's prayer in today's reading. Father, show yourself mighty today as we pray. 